Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a spoiler filled discussion of Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I previously did a spoiler free review of the book so if you haven't read it yet I'm going to encourage you to click off but you can actually go and check out my other video and I'm going to have that linked in the cards and description box. So this video specifically is a rare video where I'm actually going to be spoiling a book. I usually stay away from that but a lot of people want to know why I had my feelings about this book and so I decided to do a really quick off-the-cuff video here and I'm going to talk all the spoilers so last chance to click away. Now if you've watched my spoiler free review you're probably aware of the fact that I didn't love this one. In fact I would consider it to be my least favorite Riley Sager book and I was really disappointed. So right off the bat, I actually did enjoy the setup. I liked the beginning and I was perfectly fine with Josh being the killer. It seemed obviously too obvious, but I was okay with going along with that if it was just this cat and mouse setup where she had to figure out how to get out of the car, how to get away. I would have been totally fine with that. Although I had a feeling knowing Riley Sager's work that there probably was gonna be a twist. So I was looking for that, anticipating it. And unfortunately, I just did not like the twist that he put into this book. So a few things to point out. One being the fact that I did think that Robbie or the boyfriend, I'm really bad with names, was a really obvious killer because of the fact that there's only so many people that it could have been. And so I did suspect him very early on and I wasn't surprised. It's just kind of the problem with thrillers like this where either you create a whole cast of characters to have a whole bunch of suspects or it's kind of limited and you know the more thrillers you read the more you're going to be able to guess who done it. So I actually don't mind the fact that I did predict that part of the story. For me it was the other twist that really disappointed me. So for me the biggest one I complain about is Marge because we actually get to see inside of her head. We get to hear her thoughts and when we get to hear from her perspective she is saying very different things than she would actually be thinking if of course she is is the grandmother who has hired this bounty hunter to track down this girl and all of that. And that just really, really bugged me because in my opinion, of course an author is allowed to have twists and surprises, but there is, in my opinion, some kind of a author reader contract where if you're going to get to hear someone's thoughts, then they should be true. If you're getting something from their perspective, it should be real. Now people make the argument that this all goes into the fact that this is all a movie and so it's all produced and it's not real and it wasn't actually how the events happened. But even if that's the case, it's still really odd in a movie environment to get someone's thoughts in their head anyway. So it just did not work for me. And that kind of leads me into the larger complaint of this book is I really, really hated the final twist. The idea that it was all a movie. It's just not a twist I like. And I understand it's all based off of movie, based off of real events. And of course, she's obsessed with film, so it kind of ties into the story. But I feel like Riley Sager was stretching with this one. It just, I don't know, it seemed out of left field and I feel like he just was... I don't know, out of ideas is what came to mind when I finished reading this one. I found it very unsatisfying and honestly the more this book went on, the more the things were revealed, it just felt really far-fetched and just not very well plotted. And that's what I like with a good thriller. For those of you that are ever wondering why I complain about a thriller or why I like a particular one, it usually has to do with the author plotting out how the story is going to work. And even if I can guess the ending, I want it to be satisfying. I want it to be an ending I guessed because the author gave all of these good clues along the way. And that didn't happen with this one. Instead, I felt like he wanted to surprise his readers. I feel like Riley Sager perhaps has a lot of pressure because he is so renowned and so beloved that he feels like he needs to still surprise these readers and he knows that his audience is always looking for that twist so he's trying to pull something out of left field and I was just disappointed. I hope that his future books aren't going to be like this. I hope that he takes the time to actually think this through because at this point he's kind of cranking out a thriller per year and I kind of think it's showing. 
So those are my spoilery thoughts on Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Keep in mind that while I am being very critical on this book, for the most part I'm actually a pretty big fan of his work. I enjoyed his other books. I really like Final Girls, which is maybe a controversial opinion. Of course, Lock Every Door is probably his best in my opinion here. And I've at least enjoyed everything else I've read by him up until this point. This is probably definitely the lowest rating I've given him. So those were my spoilery opinions on this book. I would love to hear down below. Because this whole video is intended for spoilers, go ahead and talk everything in the comments. I don't mind. I won't screen any of that. So I'd love to hear down below. Did you enjoy this book? Did you agree with me? If you didn't, that's okay too. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I normally do a lot of spoiler free content telling you which books are worth the hype or not. And if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it around online, and I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.